Good evening. I'm Bob Bednard on behalf of Living Water Church of Fenton and Crossroads Apostolic Church of Hall. I welcome you to our midweek Bible study this third week of December 2020. Lord Jesus, pray God that you bless this Bible study, touch our hearts. Help me to give sense and understanding to your word. Lord, let your spirit of wisdom move upon us. Grant us wisdom. And illuminate our hearts and enlighten our minds to the principles that are in your word. And help us make the application to our daily, daily life. We're grateful to you, Lord, for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Typically, our day begins with the beep, beep, beep of an alarm from our mobile phone or the sing-song tune of our favorite radio station and our radio alarm clock. We turn on the lights just by speaking to a portable device. We wake up the laptop which slept while we slept or we just bump the mouse on our desktop and we move on into the bathroom pick up our electric toothbrush which is sitting there on the charger on our sink. We take care of our business and then head to the kitchen to start breakfast. Next we select our meal from the boxes stacked in our freezer and pop one into the microwave. Punch a couple numbers, beep beep beep. Pour a cup of coffee from the automatic coffee maker that started brewing when we were still getting out of bed. Oops! Forgot yesterday was laundry day. Nothing's folded. No problem. Just run the dryer for a few minutes to fluff out those wrinkles. And then put on some nice warm clothes. Start the day. Ding! Breakfast is ready. We grab our keys with the remote start. And uh, warm the car. So we don't waste precious seconds scraping ice or frost from the windscreen. Then we swoop up the laptop and phone from the desk, head back to the kitchen to check our texts on our phone, right? That or scan our laptop for headlines as we eat our still warm food and Wash it down with another cup of coffee or orange juice, which is in the refrigerator. Our folks used to call it an ice box because you'd get a chunk of ice from the vendor who is going down the street to put in your ice box to keep your food cool. Mm hmm. When it's time to walk out to the garage, we hit a button on the wall for the remote garage door to open if our car was not already sitting in the driveway running. And uh, our door then on our car automatically unlocks when we pull the handle without even having to take it out of our pocket. And we push a button to start the car. That's our key. We peer down at a screen to view our surroundings as we back up without even having to turn our heads. No need to pay much attention because the car beeps at us if we get too close to something. And vroom, it's off to work. Life is so convenient now. There are cars that will even do the driving for us.
The information age has given way to the age of convenience. And you know what? That's fine. I'm not here to preach against convenience. I enjoy it as much as you do. However, convenience has its price and that it has conditioned us to expect things now. Not quickly, but now. Tonight, our Bible study is titled, The Inconvenience of Convenience. We're a now generation, living in a now age. We want it now. It's our money, and we want it now. But Amos 6.1 says, Woe to them! that are at ease in Zion. Revelation chapter 3, verses 17 through 19 says, Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried, in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. Notice what Jesus then says As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. He rebukes and chastens those he loves because he wants us to do better and he knows we can do better. If you feel convicted today, praise God. Amen. Because godly sorrow leads to repentance. He says, be zealous, therefore, and repent. The inconvenience of convenience. I say that because the conditioning of convenience has severely inconvenienced us in ways we haven't realized. It has built into our psyche the unrealistic expectation of the now mentality in every aspect of our culture especially where personal communication and relationships are concerned and that includes between each other and our God we've forgotten how to be patient with each other and we've forgotten how to wait on God we have the attention span of a gnat, and that goes for those without ADHD as much as those with. You know what? We don't have a credit card Jesus, and he doesn't deliver by Amazon overnight just because we placed an order by mumbling a prayer the night before as we collapsed in our bed, exhausted, from binge watching our favorite TV show on Netflix till we couldn't keep our eyes open. Be aware. That's what our culture has conditioned us to expect. Our lives and relationships have been more than a little inconvenienced by this conditioning from convenience. Things that are not convenient now make us feel like we're wasting our time and can't be bothered with them. Or those things get put off till later. Or until we do undertake them, we do so grudgingly. 
I have some scriptures on God's perspective and what God's expectations are. And the first thing I want to point out is patience. In James 1 4 it says, But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That means having lack of nothing. Waiting on God. In Psalm 27, 14, it says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Don't get discouraged because you're in a place of waiting. That's very inconvenient to our flesh, but conducive to our spiritual health. And it says, He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Not wait until your patience runs out. It seems like it's running out because he's stretching it a little for you. Going out of our way for others. You know, in Luke 10.30 through 37, when a young ruler, a young lawyer, Seeking to justify himself, asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus told the story about a man who fell among thieves. He got beaten up and was left for dead, naked, lying in a ditch. And a priest and a Levite passed him by. A Samaritan, an ungodly Samaritan, stopped. Bound up his wounds so they stopped bleeding put him on his beast of burden, and took him to an inn. It didn't say how far he went out of his way or how much of his own resources he invested, but he certainly took the time and made the effort for a stranger. When Jesus asked the, the lawyer, he said, which to him was a neighbor? And he said, you know, the one that helped him. He didn't even want to say Samaritan. Inconvenient things. They're worth the inconvenience. How about marriage? I'm single. I got all kinds of convenience my way. And sometimes, uh, if we're not careful married men, we would wrongly envy that single person's free time and such. Say, well, my wife this, my wife that. Don't complain about your wife. You made a choice. And it was an important one and a good one. Marriage is so worth the inconvenience in the law of Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 24 verse 5. The law forbid a man to go to war his first day of marriage. That's how important that relationship is in the eyes of God. When a man hath taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war. Neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and shall cheer up his wife, which he had taken. Spend some time with your spouse, wives, husbands. Submit to one another in the fear of the Lord. Take some time and cheer each other up. Amen? Reinvest in that relationship. Children are another thing. Oh, man, Brother Bob, you don't got five kids to get ready for church. No, I don't. I don't have any. 
But I do know what Psalms 127 says. It says, It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. It's a good thing God has blessed you with. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of his youth. And you know what happens to arrows? Once they get stuck in the bow, they're gone. They fly away from you. Enjoy your relationship with your children while they are still in your quiver. Because happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Children is one way that your influence and your battle against the gates of hell can continue on after the Lord's called you home. It also mentions them, calls them like a vine around your table, right? Because they grow so fast. They grow so fast and then they're gone. Reinvest time in that relationship with your children. Even if they don't appreciate it now, they will later. Friendships. Close by friendships. It says iron sharpeneth iron. But how? without spending time with them. Psalm 27, 10 and 17 says, Thine own friend and thy father's friend forsake not, neither go into thy brother's house in the day of calamity, for better is a neighbor that is near than a brother far off. There are times that you just need a now friend. Right now, I need help. Your, your brother or sister Aunt, uncle on the other side of the country but your neighbor or your friend who you've invested time in nurturing a relationship it's there for you iron sharpeneth iron so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend how if they never come together can they sharpen each other? Even if there's friction, at least there's contact. <laughs> right? <laughs> In prayer. Prayer that is taking time to communicate with, not just talk at God. Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. He that abideth in me. Right, Brother Cody? I think you preached about that this past Sunday a little bit. Abiding in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Abiding is more than just a casual, small talk, whispered prayer before you fall asleep. Abiding. Meditation. What's that? What? Sit and think, really? Come on. Ain't no one got time for that. <laughs> really? Psalm 7, 77. Psalm 77, verses 11 through 12 says, I will remember the works of the Lord. What's, what's coming out of your mouth? Are you complaining about things, circumstances, and whatnot? Here's how to fix that. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate. Stop and think. I will meditate also of all thy work. And talk of thy doings. Refocus from... 
what he's not doing according to your perspective, to what he's done. And maybe that will help adjust that attitude. <laughs> Remember the mighty things that he did for you. And study the Bible. Open the book. And do more than just read a psalm or three. Dig into it. Find out what it means. Find out what that stuff you're reading means. Ecclesiastes 12.12 12 says, Much study is a weariness to the flesh. That sounds inconvenient, doesn't it? Because it is. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, you want to understand what you just read? Work at it. Put some effort into it. Study. Research. And fellowship. Hebrews 10.25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. You know what? We don't always feel like getting up early and getting dressed and driving out to church. But involvement and participation, investing your person, being present, and the contribution of, yes, your precious time, but given freely to other people and to your God. We want you to be a part of what you, we are doing. Join with us. Life enriching activities take time. The most important things of life require time and attention. Some things don't. But the really super important things that matter, they do. Convenience has so insidiously inconvenienced our lives due to its influence on our perspective, our world view, our paradigm, which in turn hinders our self-realization and our relationships with the unrealistic expectation of immediate gratification. It thus draining from our existence the satisfaction in the things we once enjoyed and what was once most important to us. Our relationship with God, our relationship with our families, our relationship with our friends, and yes, even our neighbors and our co-workers. Don't let convenience disrupt, distort, or destroy what's most important in your life because you've been conditioned by culture to feel inconvenienced by God, your spouse, your children, and your friends. I want to encourage you to stop. Turn around. Go back and reinvest your time, reinvest your attention and your focus on those things that matter most in this life. God bless and keep you, and good night.